All right, guys, how's it going? It's Coach Will, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get super low cost social media ads to generate leads and become the best known gym in town. So, we're going to get right into this today here. We got our little screen share up here. We're going to dive right in. Uh, so, who am I? My name is Will Hurst. I'm a two time, decade long gym owner. I've owned two gyms uh, in two different markets at two different times. One kind of in the early days of the uh, group fitness boom, 2010 to 2014, and one kind of after the boom occurred and as the market became far more competitive, uh, grew both gyms and both scenarios and both both markets to uh, seven figures using strategies just like this in today's video. And uh, now I'm giving it to you to use and, and have uh, here in today's video. So um, I'm the founder and CEO of biglittlegyms.com. Uh, this is a company that I founded almost five years ago, four plus years ago. And uh, we now work with 600 plus gyms globally, uh, all over the globe. And we have doubled year over year um, as a resource and an authority for gym owners to work with to grow their businesses. We focus on growth, sustainable and sh short and long term strategies to make helping you make better decisions and building real businesses. That's our core focus here at Big Little Gyms is to take more gym owners from this self employed, uh, do it all yourself, uh, do it on your own, uh, you know, not really a business type of model to building a real business that cash flows has some enterprise value and is and is an, a cash flowing asset for you uh, to ultimately build your empire with. Uh, most of our clients, two, two to three X their gym's revenue, profits, and membership in the first year of working with us and uh, then continue to grow year over year as a result, right? Now, today's video, I'm gonna show you how to get more leads. I'm gonna show you how to get them at a better uh, quality and I'm gonna show you how to get them at a lower cost in a way that works for a long time, not just a short, quick fix way of doing it. And the reason why I'm making a point about that is because a lot of what you're going to find out there today, what a lot of gurus are peddling are these like get rich quick type of strategies for your gym uh, that they will tell you uh, are going to change your business, right? And they're going to charge you a lot of money for these things. They're going to, they're going to charge you five, you know, five, five figures or more. Um, and they're usually how you know that this is their model is they're going to charge you for that all up front or in a very, very short period of time. Um, because they need to collect all of that from you because what happens with a lot of these strategies that are like get rich quick um, and are very, very marketing uh, heavy is they only work for short periods of time uh, if they work at all. A lot of times they don't work at all. And if they do work, they work for very short periods of time. Same with a lot of agencies. There's a lot of agencies out there that will promise you things like 50, 50 members in 30 days, 100 members in 30 days, 30 members in 30 days. These are often also like very short lived um, campaigns that have very short windows. And what they're going to do is charge you a whole lot of money in a short period of time because they know it's not going to work in two, three, four months. So what I want to do is help you actually solve the real problem because you as a gym owner, because uh, I've owned gyms and I've been there myself, uh, you need to have sustainable lead generation. You need to have sustainable, um, you know, your, your schedule needs to have people on it that are scheduled to come in the door and visit you and talk to you about your gym and, and sign up for your membership. You need to be able to have ways to generate clients on a regular basis and generate new membership on a regular basis and be able to generate leads when you need to consistently and sustainably and, and in a way that isn't turning you into a marketer and a salesperson. If you were, a, you know, and you might have a sales and marketing background. You might be interested in this kind of stuff, which is why you're watching this, but it's probably not why you started your gym. You started your gym because you wanted to build a community and a tribe of like-minded people who wanted to work and train hard together uh, and get fitter. And you wanted to have your own impact on the world. And uh, this, I know because that's why I started my gyms. I've run much, much bigger businesses. I've run multi-million dollar per year companies that I've started from the ground up. This is just one of them with big little gyms. I've owned other big businesses and gyms were some of the more humble businesses that I've owned, but you know, that didn't mean I needed to be broke. That didn't mean I needed to scrape from the bottom of the barrel. You can make a good living running a gym and you can run a gym for a long time using sustainable practices that make it profitable and you can build a real business. That's what we're going to talk about here today is how to do that. So before I do, uh, I need you to do one favor for me. I need, if you find this video, uh, valuable, you find it effective, you find a gold nugget in here, something that you know, uh, makes your bell ring just a little bit. I want you to just throw me a like on the video. It helps the YouTube algorithm. It helps me to know that it was valuable to you. Uh, it really is one of those little van vanity metrics that says, Hey, like keep creating more of this kind of content for the people that are watching. Uh, and also what goes even further for me is if you subscribe to the channel, if you subscribe, subscribe to the channel, not only will you get more content like this, uh, showing up in your feed versus what other type uh, other types of distracting type of media you might be watching, um, but you're also going to help me know that this is valuable and that the channel, that the channel is growing. And it's effective and to keep doing more of the things that are working, right? It's a big feedback loop for me right now. Uh, the la last thing you can do, if you really, really enjoyed this video and you want to make sure you get all future updates, uh, videos that I roll out, 
then click the notification bell. And when you click the notification bell, uh, what that will do is actually notify you on your phone that I rolled out a new video and you can be one of the first ones to watch it. And my goal is to ultimately roll out content that no one else is sharing with you. A lot of this content I'm gonna give you uh, that I'm giving you here on this channel is uh, I'm giving you more for free here than most other programs are charging you for. In fact, the strategy I'm gonna share with you here today is a strategy I know of at least a handful of gurus that this is literally what they charge like $10,000 plus for. Uh, is just to show you how to do this, right? So if you click that notification bell, you're gonna be the first one to get this stuff and get notified that it's there uh, before everybody else gets their hands on it, right? And uh, if you have any follow-up questions, you wanna come back and comment if you found this video valuable, uh, or if you have any follow-up questions you want me to answer, or any follow-up content you want me to create, if you post it in the comment section and give me more context, I am happy to do exactly that. So now let's get into this video. Let's dive right in, okay? So. Right here in my doc today, we're gonna to talk about what I call the paid granic strategy. Okay, this is a strategy that uh, we've created here at Big Little Gyms. I guess something, I guess it's probably not like, um, this strategy here is just something that like over the years of running a lot of ads and doing a lot of content and finding out what works, we've kind of figured out that it's this combination between organic and paid that is the most effective, right? Um, if this were four or five years ago, then you know the strategies were different. But as the market has become more and more competitive, we've realized that this kind of hybrid strategy is the most effective. And it's also uh, always been, you know, for as long as humans have been around, this combination of organic brand building with using uh, paid traffic and ads is generally like the most effective way to grow a business. Um, so who is this for, right? So this is for a gym owner that has a new gym. So maybe you have a new gym and, um, you know, you haven't even begun marketing and you're trying, you want to know the best way to market your gym. You, maybe you're, you're like, you're out there looking at all the different strategies and you want to know like, how should I go about this, right? Where should I start, right? This would be great for you. I would definitely use this strategy here. So for the gym owner that has an existing gym, uh, but most people don't know exist yet. And this is probably most gyms out there. Most gym owners watching this are probably, you know, have an existing gym and like you've been in business for five, six, seven, 10 years. And like still to this day, not a lot of people even know that you exist. If you go to the shopping market, you know, not a lot of people are gonna recognize you. Or uh, if you say your gym name, not a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, I've heard of that, right? That might be you as well. This is for the gym owner that maybe has a well-known gym, but wants to own their market. If you want to become the category king in your market, become the best known gym and make it very, very hard for a newcomer to come in and uh, take your position as the fitness resource in your market, then this would definitely be for you. This is for the gym owner that wants to dip their toe into ads, but maybe not dive in all the way. This, the great thing about this strategy is this is not a high investment strategy. This is a very low investment strategy um, that has a low cost and it works pretty sustainably, right? It's a great way to like kind of just dip your toe in the water and get some of the benefits of using paid ads on these platforms without having to go and spend like hundreds of dollars a day on ads, right? Which most gym owners, you know, aren't running multi-million dollar year businesses. So even spending a couple hundred dollars on ads can be quite the burden on the budget. So uh, this is a kind of a nice strategy to kind of ease your way into ads. Now the gym owner, this is also for the gym owner that wants to build a snowball with a consistent long-term outcome, right? So if you're focused on uh, a strategy that like is like a, a flywheel that keeps spinning because a lot of the way most gurus and like marketing agencies wanna run ads is like, it's not a flywheel. They, it's literally like, if you're running the ads, it's generating leads, but if the ads are off, they, they, they don't generate leads. Um, this strategy here, if you decide to turn them off, the brand building and the awareness and the traffic and the audience that you've built is gonna keep, is gonna keep, uh, spinning that flywheel. You're gonna, you're gonna have people in that pipeline, in that funnel that are still converting months and even years after you turn it off. And then uh, this is also for the gym owner that runs a lot of ads, but they aren't as effective as they used to be. And that's where, you know, we've seen a lot of gyms have an eye opener with this strategy is they're running kind of like this, you know, direct response, urgency, scarcity, style of ad that's become very, very popular in the last four or five years and very, very saturated in a lot of markets. And it's the only thing they're doing. And uh, as a result, they've gotten very expensive. They're not as effective as they used to be. And there's a lot more competition. This strategy here is going to separate you from the competition and help bring down that, that ad cost. Now, the old way, let's talk a little bit about, about the old way that a lot of people are still adopting, right? So this is running ads to generate leads directly at a cold audience, right? Now what that looks like is you go on Facebook or Meta or Instagram or any of these ads platforms. And in this situation here, in this video here, we're talking about Facebook and Meta and even Instagram. Um, and you, you run these ads and, and kind of who popularized these strategies this old way uh, is you know companies like Gym Launch, right? Gym Launch, and not to throw stones at them, their strategy was great 
when it worked and when the timing was right for it. And in a lot of ways, they paved the way for a lot of people like me to come along and come up with even better, more no novel solutions for this strategy. Uh, back four or five, six years ago, if you would have run a strategy like that, this kind of urgency, scarcity, uh, very bait and switch style of advertising that they were kind of building a uh, head of steam around, um, you would have had a lot of success. And I know because back then, even I ran strategies like this and they worked very, very, very well. You would get leads for a couple of dollars. Your cost per acquisition per client was maybe 10, 20, 30, 40 bucks. And that's because you know, these platforms, they evolve. Platforms like um, Facebook, Meta, you know, Meta who owns Instagram and Facebook, they evolve. And these platforms, they don't, um, they don't work the same. They, as time comes along, as things go along, if they work, if it works, more people are gonna jump on that, that boat. And, that we, and we saw that with companies like Gym Launch where like they had four or 5,000 gyms at one point running their stuff, which means like in any market, you had 100 gyms running the exact same ads, the exact same strategy, the exact same follow-up, and the exact same offer, and even running their gyms the exact same way. And when you do that, naturally, you flip the su supply and demand dynamics on their head, right? If there's you know, a, you know, not enough demand and a lot of supply, naturally prices are gonna to start to go down. Your ability to close members is gonna go down. Your cost, if everybody's running ads the same way on the same platform, the cost to run those ads are gonna go way up because they're gonna be less effective at generating leads, right? Now this is the old way of doing things, okay? This, this way doesn't work anymore because it has saturated markets. Um, and when it's saturated markets, the only, the only place you're gonna get traffic from is really, really cold audiences. Cold audience that don't know, like, and trust you. Facebook starts showing your ads to people that don't, aren't even looking for fitness, right? Because it's trying to find an audience of people to show your stuff to that it hasn't shown the same stuff from someone else to already. And as a result, you end up with a lot of leads. And if you've run some ads on Facebook, you've probably had this happen where uh, you get a whole bunch of leads and then like you close like 2% of them. You sign like 100 leads and you, you, you close like two if that. And uh, that's because the people that are seeing your ads, like Facebook showing that to them, but they have no idea who you are. They don't like you yet. In fact, like you're, you're pushing these ads on front of them that are like buy my stuff, limited spaces, urgency, scarcity, bait and switch. And they've seen it before. So they probably like you even less if they've never seen you before and they don't trust you. Right? They don't trust you. If anything, this kind of makes it harder for them to trust you because they're seeing everybody run the same stuff. And people naturally, when they start seeing a lot of the same thing in every market, they start to get uh, skeptical of it. Right? So you, you, you're doing the opposite of no like and trust. Right? And it's also very repetitive. And that's why it doesn't work as well is because that rinse and repeat strategy of do the same thing all the time. It works the first two or three times you run it. And that's what a lot of like agencies will do is they'll run this ads campaign that's very, very urgency, scarcity, bait and switch. Um, and it's, and they'll do it over, they'll rinse and repeat it for two, three, four months. And then it stops working after two and three months. Right. Uh, and when they, when they do work, the quality of leads is very, very poor. And the quality of customer you do sign is very low and churn is high. Right. So as you're signing these types of customers up, like you're finding that they're not like the people that came in through word of mouth. You're finding that they're not like the people that came in organically that did their research and came in and, uh, got to know you and, uh, assimilated with your community and indoctrinated into your community and became kind of one of the tribe. You're finding out that these people, these people you're signing off of these, these types of ads are, you're having a harder time getting them to stick and having a harder time connecting with them. And that's what happens. I know because again, I, I was part of this evolution and, and we have over 600 gyms that run our ad strategies and we've watched these evolutions happen, which is why I get on here and I update these things to say like, this is where the target has moved to. My goal is to always make sure you guys know where the target has moved to and what to do to stay ahead of the curve. Because what's gonna happen is everybody in your market, if something is working, everybody in your market is going to adopt it and do it as well. But if you're always a step ahead, you're always moving to where the target is going. You're, as Wayne Gretzky used to say, skate to where the puck is going, not where the puck is, right? I think that's who, Wayne, who used to say as Wayne Gretzky, or it might be just a, a figurative saying in general, a uh, generality. So anyways, the new way is what we call this paid Gannick strategy, okay? And it's very interesting, okay? And it's gonna sound counterintuitive, but I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna show you in this video how we do it, all right? I'm gonna give you examples. I'm gonna do some case studies. I'm gonna show you what's different, um, but you need to hear me out here. This is not to generate leads directly. Now, what I mean by that is it's going to generate leads, um, but it's gonna generate them more in a way that is gonna feel more organic, more natural. It's not gonna, you're not running these ads with the specific intention of that ad right now, that dollar you're spending right this second to generate a lead, right? It's going to create very, it's, it, it's the goal here is to create really good, valuable, organic content uh, that builds your know, like, and trust, right? So you're actually leveraging the social media platforms the way they are intended. Social media platforms were never, 
like the way that they work, the way Facebook works, the way that Instagram works, the way that Meta works, the way that any of these social media platforms work is they leverage what's called the social graph, right? So they basically, if someone uh, engages with your content, Facebook looks at that person's social graph and says like, okay, who are their 20 closest friends and what do they have in common? And then if they find that there's a commonality there, then they show your content to all of those other 20 friends, right? So that's how the social graph gets leveraged with, uh, with these social media platforms, right? So what you're doing here is you're actually leveraging that. And when you do that, you, you, you close these degrees of separation and you create virality in your market, right? You end up creating like people start having discussions around you. More people that know each other start uh, having a similar conversation around like what you do, uh, maybe not particularly your business, but the, maybe what you sell. And as a result, when they all start looking for it, if you're the one that's top of mind, they're gonna do business with you and they're all gonna tell each other that they're going to your gym and then they're all gonna show up at your gym. And it's gonna feel like something changed and you're not gonna know why because it's not like, oh, you flipped the switch and all of a sudden a bunch of people showed up. And what's gonna happen is also these people, because they're getting more touch points with your content and you're leveraging paid traffic to get more of this high touch content in front of them, they are going to be better customers. They're gonna be people that are uh, more warmed up, right? Because in the, in, in the world of like growing a business, and this is with all business, big, big businesses focus on this, is that you know when we create a customer that's had seven to 10 touch points with us before doing business with us, they become a very indoctrinated customer that uh, becomes a better a tribe person. That's why you'll see companies like Nike do the branding that they do and continue to pump content out even though people have already bought tons of their shoes and already love their shoes. If you've already owned a pair of Nikes, for example, you probably don't need a Nike commercial to get you to buy another pair of shoes. But it does because uh, it continues to reinforce that you made a good decision, right? It continues to give you touch points. So that way when you do think about needing a new pair of shoes, you're just gonna buy Nikes again because it kind of stands for what you stand for, right? Okay, now it's gonna also generate awareness and build audience, okay? So that's kind of the focus of paid organic is rather than just like only, so when you're running like a typical direct response campaign, which direct response, what that means, because I know a lot of people reading this, like watching this are not necessarily marketers, direct response ads are the type of ads that are like, we have six spots and we are looking for, you know, six women in XYZ city, click below, fill out the form, get started, right? Like, and that type of uh, campaign is not bad. It, like it has a place in your marketing, it has a place, but if it's the only thing you're doing, then like all you're doing is trying to take and generate opt-ins from cold traffic. And again, that's gonna create more of these people that aren't really the, they're not really connecting on the wavelength of what like most of your organic and existing clients have. Um, what works better with this type of campaign is it's to generate awareness and build audience. And then you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna run direct response ads at this, uh, at this warm audience, right? So you can use what's called retar a retargeting strategy, which we're gonna get into in this video. Now, as a result, you'll generate more leads organic for free than when you do run uh, lead gen ads, right? So you're gonna, like, you're gonna find out that when you're running these, you know, because when you're running like lead gen ads, you're gonna be spending, you should be spending at least 20, 30, 40, $50 a day. And for that, you're gonna be generating say five or six, you know, leads per, per day if you're doing that well, which if you, by the way, if you wanna run that strategy, we have a video on that here. It's one of our most popular videos here on the Big Little, Big Little Gym's channel. And it's about how to run that, um, lead gen style of ad that's gonna generate you like four, five, six, seven like leads today, a day. But um, what you're gonna find with this strategy is you're gonna generate more organic leads, okay? Because people, what happens with a better buyer, the person who's gonna be a better long-term customer is gonna spend more money is they're more discerning and they aren't as impulsive, right? A, a, a really, like your best customers are generally like gonna be more affluent, especially for like if you're running a group fitness model gym where you're, you're charging premium prices and you don't wanna be a low price leader, those types of buyers are gonna be more discerning, more affluent, and they also can smell from a million miles away desperation. So if you are struggling to get customers and you're desperate and you're running these like discount style, bait and switchy, urgency scarcity style ads, like it's kinda like the, the guy who like really wants a girlfriend and like he could be handsome and he could have like all the, you know, he could have all the intangibles of like a desirable like male, but like if he's desperate, like the women just want nothing to do with him, right? They want nothing to do with him. It's, and it's the same thing when you're trying to sell a gym membership to people uh, that like are looking for a premium offering is if you are desperate, like they want nothing to do with you. So you're only ever gonna get the customers that are looking for like the low price option, which are generally not the people that are invested in their long-term fitness and well-being and a community and a tribe like yours, right? So, um, you're going to get 
better leads at a much cheaper cost. Now here's what's cool is these strategies stack. So if you're running the, the direct response style of ad and you're finding that it's running very expensive, when you run this strategy, over time, you're gonna find your cost per lead actually going down. You're gonna find it going down. And the reason why is because the way the social graph works is if they're watching all your organic stuff, when you go to run a more you know, urgency, scarcity driven ad offer, like offer style ad that it has strong calls to action and are like, you know, buy my stuff today. Like, because they've already seen a bunch of your content, when you finally do, you know, make the offer, you're going to find that those leads are going to opt in and at a much, much better cost. It's, I kind of call it like the jab, jab, jab. Well, I don't call it this. Gary V actually calls it this. He wrote a book on this called the jab, 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 right hook. And it's about like when you're doing marketing to your local audience, like you're, you're jabbing, you're just, you know, when you're throwing a jab in a boxing match, you're not trying to knock the guy out. Why you, why you throw the jab is just to keep the guy engaged on that jab. You want that person to really like lock eyes with that left fist if you're right-handed, because the right hand is the power hand. That's your, that's your right hook. Your left hand is your, your, your setup hand. And you throw enough of those jabs, the guy starts thinking about those jabs if it's connecting. And then when they uh, are kind of like really biased towards that jab, you throw the right hook. And, they're, and because they're not expecting it, it connects and it works. So it's the same kind of model with your marketing and your media that like you want to produce uh, content that sets up. You're not always pitching. You're not always creating scarcity. You're not always creating, creating urgency. Instead, what you're doing is you're giving more value. We're going to talk about that next, right? And you're getting them to pay attention and you're getting them hooked on your content. So when you do make an offer, they really, really, really want to buy it because you've built value, you've built reciprocity. And that's how it works in the eyes of a buyer is uh, when we give a lot of value, and we receive something we didn't even pay for, whether it be on the internet, whether it be real life, whether it be advice, whether it be a good Samaritan helping us out, the first thing we say to them is, what can I do for you? And people work the same thing, same way in a transaction is that if you build value with them and you give them something for free, naturally, they're gonna assume that the, the, the paid version is really, really good. They're also gonna think about, okay, when I need that thing, I'm gonna go to that guy first, right? So you're building a lot of reciprocity here in your market. So what's different about this style of, of, of content? So it's not clickbaity. Okay, there's no, uh, click, there's none of this clickbait stuff in it, right? There's, uh, there's no call to action. So you're actually not actually trying to sell or pitch them at all in this style of content. You're gonna be posting value consistently. Consistency is the key, right? And then you're gonna push traffic to those content pieces that hit and use a remarketing strategy to make sure they see more of the other pieces that, have, that uh, people like them have engaged well with, okay? Now here's an example of the walkthrough strategy. So we're gonna dive in in our screen share here and I'm gonna show you kind of like how I set this up and uh, kind of like how this works. Okay, so the keys here, we gotta talk about some key points before we get into the, the, the actual like screen share here is this strategy starts with a good, consistent, organic content. And I'm gonna tell you what that is because a lot of people think good, consistent, organic content is just like posting pictures of their members or like, um, you know, a lot of times they're just like talking about like why uh, they're better than the other guys. Right, they'll be like, that gym's not good and we're better because of this, right? And here's the interesting thing about that type of marketing message is that when you say you're better than something, that means you're saying you do the same thing. It means you say you do thing, you do the same thing. Because like, if you're better, it means you do the same thing, you just perform at a higher level of it. When people hear better, they're not really that excited about better. Improvement offers have a very low rate of um, acquisition and conversion. Um, the, the car market does this a lot, right? The reason why, you know, they have different models of cars and make everyone looks different is because like as people upgrade, they don't generally want a better version of the same thing. They usually want to go up to the next model because the next model is different. It's a bigger car. It's a more comfortable car. It's a uh, better performing car. And that combination of things makes it a completely different experience, right? And that's also why like certain brands will, certain bigger companies, conglomerates will own multiple brands of the same thing, but with totally different branding and different vibes and different feelings because like, you know, you might like this hot sauce, it's a dollar, and this one over here is five dollars, but when this one gets, you get tired of this one, you're not gonna look for a better version of the same thing, you're gonna look for something different, right? So like, it's the same thing. People are much more attracted to new, exciting, and different, um, and they have much, much higher like opt-in rates and like audience building potential than like when you say you're a better version of the same thing, right? So like the content needs to be valuable. Now you need, the good way I like to think about this is like giving away more for free than your competition charges for. Right, like so, when they become a member of your gym, what are the what's the type of content that you're giving them in person? Right, like if you know if someone's hurting, if someone has a pain point, if their hip hurts, because a lot of people 
that are not members, members of your gym, they're sitting around with like hips that are tight and they probably hurt because they're not working out now and they're sitting at a desk all day or they're sitting in a car all day or sitting in a truck all day. They're doing something sitting and they probably have hip pain, right? They probably, or they have back pain. They have some sort of, everybody has some sort of shared pain that they're uh, experiencing. And um, you can identify those talking points and give them the solution for it in your content for free, right? Now, uh, I'm going to show you the key types of posts because that's that would be considered like an educational type of post. There's also, you know, so the inform and educate is one type of post. So you should be and you should be rotating these. So inform and educate here. Uh, you should also be entertaining them, right? So it should be something that shows people that are watching. Like this is like not going to be a boring place to work out. Like people don't want to go and spend like an hour a day at some place that's like really dry and just only informative and they're being lectured on their fitness and it's just only corrective exercise, right? Like people, like as, as effective as that might be, like if they don't want to do it, they're not gonna do it. So you're not really helping people by doing that, right? So you need to be entertaining as well. People have to see that they, they wanna work with you. Uh, and that should include like some of like your, your in-class experience. Like what's it like to do a workout here at this gym? What, it, you know, you know, showcasing your coaches. And I'm gonna do a case study here between two gyms that like are both gyms that we work with that we've identified like that have two different behaviors and like these gyms have two different outcomes. Both are successful gyms, but both have gone completely different in different directions in regards to the way that they talk about their content. One is having a better uh, experience with the way that they use social media than the other. Um, and so I'm gonna go over that case study here in a minute. Now, it should also persuade them, right? So after you inform and educate and after you entertain, there should be like motivational type of content that persuades them to wanna make change. They should wanna take action without saying take action. If you're just saying, sign up at my stuff today because we have limited spots, like people don't have to believe that. And they probably won't believe that if that's all you're saying all the time, that the scarcity isn't so scarce if you're always running out of spots, right? So like what should make them feel persuaded is that like there's FOMO, there's demand, there's the appearance of people training in your gym, that the gym looks like it's busy, it's happening. Um, and even if it's not, finding ways to make it appear like it is in demand in one shape, form or another, or make it or make it persuasive from the perspective of getting results, right? Like maybe you're showcasing uh, member experiences and member results and not just like showing a picture of a member hitting a specific movement, like a very acute event. It should be like showcasing a member's story and how their life has changed and how it is better as a result. And also speaking to the person watching about like if they were considering doing business with you, what they would tell them. Because it's one thing for you to tell someone why they should do business with you, but it's a whole nother thing for an existing client to speak through your content to the person watching as to why they think that person should join. And they will listen to that 10 times more and act on that 10 times more than you saying why they should. Because of course, they're less likely to listen to you because you're biased, you're the business person. You're the one who has monetary incentive to convince them why they should join your business. And if they know, like, and trust you, they're gonna believe you more. If they believe you're more genu genuine, they believe you're more authentic, then they're probably gonna trust you more. But no matter how good you do that, they're gonna trust what someone else says about you even more. And it also builds your authenticity. It also builds your trust. And they are more likely to listen to what you have to say when they've heard a thousand other people say how good you are. That's something we have going here at Big Little Gyms is, I actually don't, if you look at any of my content, I don't really sit around talking about why we're so great. I talk about a little bit about our results and our growth and how we serve our clients and the results our clients get, but I let our clients do that for us all over social media. And most of how we grow is most of what other, client, other clients are telling other people in the space. And it was the same when we had our gyms, was when, you know, when we would showcase that, we would lift that stuff. So when our, mem when our members at our gyms, would talk about the results that they got, we would, we would record a lot of that content. We, we, would, we would stage that stuff up and we would put that in our social media. And then if it got results, we would use this paid Gannick strategy to spool up the flywheel, okay? Because this is the foundation of it. And I'm gonna show you here in a second in this case study, a big, big difference in like the outcomes of these two types, these two types, like doing it this way and not doing it this way, okay? So I'm gonna go, and screen, go ahead and screen share here and, uh, I'm gonna show you uh, two different gyms here. So we have OIL Fitness here. Um, this is a gym in Hazlitt, Texas. This is a gym in a small town in Texas here. Um, this is their Facebook profile here. And uh, this gym here uh, joined Big Little Gyms about two and a half years ago, two years ago. When they started with us, they had about 70 members and they were doing about $14,000 in revenue. There were two partners, Jonathan DeFries and Mike Wilson. Um, both these gym owners here, um, Really, really good guys. Uh, you know, uh, one guy's one of the owners has more of a sales kind of mindset. And one of the owners has more of like an engineering operations mindset. And they are a, a great 
pair of guys. And when they came to us, their gym was stuck here. They had been, this gym had been in business for like seven, eight years. OL Fitness when they came to us. And they were st stuck at 70 members doing 14K and then in this town of like 3,000 people. This gym here now, this gym right here, they just won our 50K Club Award last year. Our 50K Club Award is a, is a Thor hammer. It's a big Thor hammer that's like the size of my head that's uh, handmade by, by a veteran that we give to all of our, our gyms that work with us that have crossed a 50K revenue month. Uh, ideally for multiple months. And this gym has done, has, is now at $63,000 a month in recurring revenue. And this is in a town of 3,000 people um, in uh, in rural Texas, right? Okay, so like this eliminates the excuse of this not being applicable to small businesses. And uh, this is their gym here. And if I go down the page here, um, well, let me first like zoom out here on the other use case here. So this is a gym here. This is Badger Cross. This is a gym that's worked with us for also a couple of years. And this gym also has grown pretty well. It's a 200 member uh, CrossFit gym. Um, and they've been with us for a couple of years and uh, they have grown organically uh, to date. And like, but they are doing things in a completely different way. And this is the gym that like has both these gyms run ads. And both gyms are having completely different outcomes. This gym here, Badger CrossFit, great owner, uh, OG CrossFit gym owner. Uh, I think he has 200, 250 members. I think he does 30, 40, 50K months. But he has struggled to get anything going on social media. Most of his clients have grown like organically or through like other channels of growth, like, you know, Google search uh, and things like that. And uh, in my discussion with this gym owner, we've begun to have a discussion about like why it's not working as well. Now, I want to like, talk about this and in, in deep dive a little bit. So this gym owner right here, um, what they do, if you look at their profile here, uh, they very much follow the, the know, like, and trust model. They very much work to inform and educate, entertain, and also persuade in their posts. And they do it in rotation very, very, very well. So you could see here, like first thing you see one hour ago, they did their March birthdays here and recognized a bunch of their members. Uh, and they showed members of all types and all, you know, ethnicities, genders, age groups, and uh, they're getting in here and they're like putting their birthdays out on here. Um, you can see that they run a podcast and they record their podcast. This is the two owners of the gym and they talk about like creating culture in their gym and they're talking about like the bigger things that people are looking for in their market, right? They're, by, by, by doing a content about this, they're signaling to their market that like we are a place of culture and like we have a vibe here and we have a community and this is for everybody. And this is just a little real snippet from a larger podcast that they did, like a one minute snippet. And then we go further down here and um, they're celebrating memory. Um, uh, 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 Emily, who is a gym a client that's uh, just hit her two year gym anniversary. And you can see they're showcasing this wall at their gym that celebrates how long their members have been with them and they're giving recognition. Now what this signals to everybody looking is that they are a place that recognizes their members, okay? Now, if we go down further, we, we're gonna find a few more examples. They're obviously talking about like upcoming events at their gym. They're doing the CrossFit Open, so they're talking a little bit about the CrossFit Open, but that's not all they're talking about. A lot of CrossFit gyms do this thing when the CrossFit Open comes around, where every post is about the CrossFit Open. And what's funny is they're talking to this audience like they're all their members. When in reality, 70, 80% of the people looking at these posts and seeing these posts are not your members. Your members are seeing them, but most of the people looking on are not your members. And the more everything you post about is pushing away as much as it's pulling in. So the content you are uh, publishing is very assumptive that they should know what you're talking about and it's not, and they feel left out of the loop, then they're just gonna go to someone else that's more relatable. They're not gonna do business with you because they can't relate with what you're talking about because they have no clue what you're talking about. They don't know or care what the CrossFit Open is or what a, you know, alternating dumbbell snatches. They don't care. They're just here to figure out like, is this a place I should start my fitness journey or not? And there's not enough speaking to them in your content because how it works is like when people see your ads, when people see your stuff, most people who are gonna make better clients of your gym, they're gonna, they're not just gonna click the ad. They're not that impulsive. They're gonna go and do some research. They're gonna click on your profile up here. They're gonna land on your profile and they're gonna, they're gonna probably look at the top three or four posts. And if it pushes them away, they're just gonna, go back to whatever they are doing and find someone else to do business with. If it hooks them and they decide in those couple of moments where they look at some posts, if this looks like it might be for me, they're probably gonna go back and take action and opt in. And that, that snowballs to a high degree. So if we keep going down here, you can see, okay, Coach Britt, he's showcasing a coach and you're getting to know Coach Britt and uh, Coach Britt is teaching some valuable content. So she's 
They're giving away for free the stuff the members pay for here on the profile. And do members care? No, they don't. The members love that they post this content, but also people that are not members are watching this and saying, oh, wow, look at how they taught this mem look at how they taught this person just like me how to do this thing. And it seems like it's very learnable, right? If we go further down, another uh, little uh, excerpt from their, their content talking about how the co healthcare system is, is broken. So I like that. It's a little bit prolific. It's a little bit like uh, saying like, that's not working. We're solving the real problem, right? Big health, big, big medicines broken. We solve the real problem, right? So they're talking about like things that are relatable for the average person. A lot of people actually agree with right now, right? They're talking about ankle flexibility, shoulder pain, right? Like why you might not be able to do this movement because of, you know, shoulder limitations, ankle limitations. And here's what you can work on to improve this. That way the average person who's not a member of this gym can look at this and be like, okay, cool. I can start working on these things now. Or at least they're going to feel like you have the ability to overcome these things and you're not going to make them do these movements and be hurt all the time. You're basically like, you're showing them you're good at the thing by giving them the thing for free, which is just like a really interesting mindset, right? Okay, so like now that we've gone through a few of these posts, you can see here like this, they also like, uh, they did free event, knee health workshop with Dr. Ryan Perez. Um, we go further down, uh, talking about like drinking more water, very simple fundamental things that everybody can do to get a result, right? Like, and here's the benefit and they're just giving away free advice. Okay, and you can see a lot of really, really good content here. This is stuff that if I was looking for a gym and I was doing my research, like I would heavily consider this gym. Now let's go to this other gym. Let's go to Badger CrossFit. Love these guys, great gym. But they've struggled a little bit to get this going. And um, this is something recently, recently I've, had, I've had a conversation with this gym owner about and they're gonna start changing. But here's what they've been currently doing. And when we've run ads, we've struggled. They've been struggling to get the ads to work as well as they want. The ads have been running more expensive. They're finding a lot of the traffic they're getting is not converting into customers. They're finding the leads that they are getting are very, very cold. And so the first thing I did was went through their profile and I'll go th and, and, and I reviewed it. And I said, okay, this is, this is very obvious as to why. Now if I go here, first post I see, A, I don't see any featured posts. If you go to this one here, you can see right at the top, they've got uh, what are called featured posts, which are like, you know, some of their best of posts. You can make any post a featured post and you should take the post that people engage with the most and turn it into a featured post, okay? Now, uh, Badger CrossFit, no featured post. Uh, the grid here that it shows looks like people doing a lot of, there's a lot of like, we are hosting the CrossFit certificate course, a High Rocks event, High Rocks event, uh, gal Pretty Jack's doing deadlifts, uh, throwdown. So at first appearance, it looks pretty intense. If I'm the average person in this market, and the gym owner, this gym owner is trying to, to attract more of the average person in their market. They're in a suburban area, and uh, they got a lot of fit people in their gym. They've grown being one of the more fit gyms in the area and being like this hardcore CrossFit brand, but they're trying to attract more people into their gym. And it's very clear just like at, with brief glance that this is like, you know, not really speaking to that person. Now I go down. And okay, we just wrapped up our open prepped and mini skill session. We had some PR 22.3 times DUPRs and single crossover PRs in our skill prep. We are ready for 24.1 next Saturday for our beach theme. Now, if I'm an existing member who loves CrossFit, which is a very small percentage of the market, then maybe I know what this means. But if I, and I owned CrossFit gym, so I know what this means. But if I'm the average person, I'm like, what are you talking about? First thing I see is this. And if I go back to the previous one, we are hosting the CrossFit Level 1 Certificate course on June 1st. I am not, you know, if I'm the average person, I'm not interested in getting a CrossFit Level 1 certificate, okay? I am interested in just figuring out how to be a fitter version of myself, how to do away with back and hip pain, how to do away with diabetes, how to sell, solve like some very fundamental things, okay? Um, if you want to prepare for high rocks, decor, and endurance events, you need to be sure to check out our engine class on Saturdays. Okay, not so bad, but the average person isn't preparing for a high rocks, decor, or endurance event, right? Maybe some of your existing members are. So if you look here, it's like almost like he's using this as a place to talk to his members. And you can see like there's a little bit of engagement here, uh, probably because the photos are nice. I love the photos. The media is very important, the photos you do type here but the content is not like super like relatable for the average person. And so when he's running ads and people click through to see like, okay, what kind of gym is this? And are they a fit for me? And he's running ads to this very cold traffic that's never heard of him, doesn't know, like, or trust him. And he sees this, they see this, they're like, yeah, I don't think so. This is not for me, right? And if we keep going, okay, happy birthday to coach. Okay, that's cool, it's not so bad. Um, but coach is pretty jacked. And like, should we showcase her and her successes? Absolutely. But if this is the, you know, we're not showcasing, I mean, I guess we are showing some more existing members, um, but we're not 
celebrating maybe enough of like our average member that's more relatable to uh, the average population in this area. Okay, week number two down for open prep. The group took on 19.3, one of the extra challenging workouts. One more week of prep and then on to the 2024 CrossFit Open. The average person looks at the CrossFit Open like a sport. They're like, this is a sport. I am not ready to play a sport. This is like if you were thinking about playing ice hockey, because that's what CrossFit looks like on TV. It looks like I'm about to play ice hockey. And you see what happens in ice hockey is like they get hit. They, uh, they got to be highly skilled. They have to be fast. They have to be agile. They have to learn how, learn how to stick handle with a stick while skating on ice skates right like that's what it looks like and they're like oh my gosh like that's that's okay again too much right and i think it's great that they're like recognizing members but this again this is stuff that should go in like a the members facebook group like the, whatever internal member communication channels you have where you talk to your membership that's where this should go right this should not like and it should be going here too like you should recognize your members openly and publicly that's very very important because the people looking at that see that and are like okay cool like they recognize their people i want some of that problem is is if it's only people that accomplish these things then like that's not relatable for them right okay registration is live uh that's a registration for a crossfit competition uh more cop talk about the competition okay here's a good one okay so i had to go down almost uh two weeks ago and like a dozen posts to get here, but now we have a really good post. This is what should be going on, you know, I would say every three or four posts, every two or three posts, is we got Shirley here and she's talking about, you know, being turning 50 and, you know, uh, how this has helped take her to the next level uh, with a lot of the things she does in her personal life. Okay, uh, happy Valentine's Day. That's kind of a cool, fun post. I like that, that's fun, it's entertaining. Uh, this video here is Zeria, who is like obviously, you know, super, you know, she's fit and she's, she's focused and it's awesome. Like it's great to celebrate Zeria, but again, there's just a lot of this, right? It's very clear. They're speaking to people, you know, they're just showcasing people that have this fitness lean that have only accomplished things through CrossFit. Um, so big, big difference in the content. Here's another good one. Throwback Thursday. So like there needs to be more of this kind of content like OYL fitness is doing here. That is recognizing more of their average member, giving high value, talking about things that are relatable for the average person, letting them know this is a place where this is our our view on things, uh, celebrating the average member and their time at your gym, um, you know, sure updates about like the update upcoming events, uh, getting them to know your coaches, having them feel more coach, uh, co helping people feel more comfortable with the people that are gonna be coaching them in your gym before they even become a member of your gym. It also, this also does a lot for this coach and this coach is getting to feel some local celebrity as well. And this coach, when they go to a the shopping market to buy their clothes and how, or not to go there uh, to buy their groceries, believe me, and the shame owner shared with me that this coach, like she gets approached by people saying, hey, I've watched your videos. I've seen you on the internet. I really love the way you coach people. You know, can you tell me more about the gym? And this coach is, you know, out there selling memberships while she's picking up, you know, uh, lunch meat at the deli right and that works this gym in fact this, these gym owners get recognized in their town all the time now here's what's interesting is this gym here um nope didn't mean to zoom in on that we're gonna zoom back out here guys there we go this gym here badger crossfit is in uh you know the suburban area of milwaukee wisconsin the suburban area of like multiple millions of people um sure a lot of competition but a whole lot more people this gym here is in Hazlitt, texas and uh, you know, town of 3,000 people, right? And this gym here has uh, 5X their growth, 4X their growth, and has done you know $60,000 plus months recently, and is still growing without doing a lot of marketing at all. Um, this gym is, is growing as well, but he's, they're relying a lot more on their word of mouth um, and, and getting less upside from their marketing. And these are the things that like, if I were them, these are the changes I would be making, right? So it's very, very important that we cover that. Now let's talk about like, once we do this, how do we leverage the, the ad strategy? Because like, so far we've talked a lot about organic marketing, um, which is hopefully something that you find valuable and go and deploy because like, in order to do the paid stuff well, you need to be doing this, right? For all the reasons I just said. Okay, so how do we use the ad? So we're gonna go to the Facebook Business Manager, okay? So we're gonna go to the Facebook Business Manager here and uh, it's business.facebook.com. Uh, or the ads manager, uh, either one works, which I believe is like adsmanager.facebook.com. Uh, and once we get here, we're gonna go to our ad account, okay? And what we do is we go into our ads account here. I'm just gonna make this screen a little bit bigger so it hopefully doesn't cover up too much of my face here as I do it. There we go, just because I want you guys to be able to see more of my screen. There we go, we're gonna just move this over a little bit here. There we go. 
and we're gonna close this out. Okay, so this is this gym's account here. And you can see here that they are taking uh, these posts and they are running uh, awareness ads to them. So how this works is you go in here and you click create, you know, well, actually let's, let's back up a little bit before we, what we wanna do is we wanna find our best of, right? So if we go to um, OIL's page, page here, what you're doing is as you're making a post here, you know, this one here is a really, really good one. Celebrating Emily, and you can see Emily here got 103 likes, 18 comments, right? So if we go in here, uh, you can see like, and this gym owner's made an intention to tell his membership like, hey, go to this post and say something you know, nice about Emily, right? And like, he'll do this in the private, in his private communities and say, here's the post, go to it and, and, and give Emily a, a virtual high five. And so they'll get all these comments and likes, right? We call this the paid organic strategy. And then uh, once they do that, and they've found a post that has this kind of lift, 104 likes, 18 comments, lots of engagement, you know, um, and I'll just look at a couple others here. So this one here uh, is more of a content post, just two likes, not a lot there. This one here, uh, not a lot going for it yet, but that was only posted nine minutes ago. Um, we go back, is, is there more here? Okay, this one here's got good, uh, if we were to click on it, let's just make this bigger. You know, we can't see how many views it has, but they'll be able to uh, when they look at theirs. But on the ones that get lots of views, the ones that like, are getting are doing very well organically getting lots of views lots of likes those are the very very good candidate posts to do this strategy with okay so i'm going to show you how that works okay so we're going to go to the business manager here uh, the ads manager here and you're going to go to create campaign and then you're going to go to uh what's called uh you can go either traffic or awareness both of these tend to get a lot of um, eyeballs at a cheap cost and we're going to click awareness now very important to understand the objective here is not to generate leads okay can you generate leads? Yes, but it's gonna be more passively. It's gonna be more organically. Like we're just trying to get eyeballs on these, right? So you're gonna click awareness. You're gonna click click continue, all right? Now it's gonna start a campaign here and I'm gonna go ahead and go uh, even bigger on my screen and I'm gonna have to move a little bit out of the way. There we go, okay. There we go, okay. And I'm gonna just move myself off to the side. Actually, let's go ahead and do this and make this a little bit smaller. There we go. Okay, cool. So there's my screen. Okay, so now what you can see here, it sets up a new awareness campaign. Now we're gonna title this uh, Paid Organic, and we're gonna call, we're gonna just date it for today, 229.27, or just 220, or sorry, 224, just your month and your year. And then um, you can say posts, okay? And then down here, uh, I like to take uh, campaign budget optimization off, A-B test off, and we're gonna go ahead and click next, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, title this one um, paid organic post number one, okay? And we're gonna go with, multi you can go with multiple reach of ads, you can go with multiple number of impressions, you can go add recall lift. Now the difference between these is multiple reach is just gonna show it to as many people as possible, okay? It's gonna show it to as many people as possible. Uh, maximum number of impressions, what that's gonna do is that's gonna show it to people as many times as possible. So it'll show it to a lot of people, but also more times, right? So the same person might see the same ad two or three times per day versus one person seeing the ad one time per day. I, I really like this maximum number of impressions because I want the same people to see it over and over and over again. I want touch points, okay? Ad recalls the people that are likely to remember seeing them. Jury's still kind of out on this for me on whether or not this actually even works, okay? So I'm gonna click maximum number of impressions, okay? We're gonna click the page here, bid control we're gonna leave alone, uh, delivery type, we can just leave this whenever. Dynamic creative, we're gonna create, we're gonna leave that off. And we're just gonna go with like $2 per day, okay? And then we're gonna go with start date and we're gonna leave, and we're gonna set this to start like in an hour from now, okay? And then end date, we're just gonna leave it open because we just want, this is something we're gonna run all the time for $2 a day, super cheap, right? So 60 bucks a month and this is gonna see a lot of people, a lot of people are gonna see this, okay? So we're gonna go down here and we're gonna go, we're gonna leave budget scheduling all alone. Uh, don't mess with this, I just like to let it run all the time because people, you know, are gonna be on the internet at two o'clock in the morning, 2 p.m. And the goal is we're not trying to generate leads right now. We're just trying to get them to see our stuff. Okay, now audience controls here. We're gonna go down here and we're gonna switch to original audience options uh, and use original audience. Okay, I like to use this for this strategy. Uh, next, we're gonna go with um, locations and we're gonna go with this gym's location. Okay, so we're gonna go with CrossFit OYL. Right, uh, oh, that's not showing up yet. Okay, so uh, let's find their address. So CrossFit OIL, there it is. 
and we're going to grab their address here, 5796 East State Highway, Unit 114. So we're going to go back to the ads manager there, and we're going to type that one in. And let's see if it finds it. Uh, State Highway. Still not finding it. 5796 East State. And the tr it's a little tricky here in uh, trying to find the right address. We could just type in Hazlitt and see if that finds it. Okay, still not finding it. So we're going to use their old location, which is on here. It's literally the same spot almost. Um, OYL. Is there a CrossFit OYL? Or we could try it. Maybe OYL Fitness is on here. Let's see. OYL Fitness. I think they changed their name. Oh, that's not on here yet. Okay. All right. So we're going to leave that alone. Okay. So I found their location here. We'll just use this. You can type your address in whatever you want. And for this gym, we're going to go about like a seven to 10 mile radius out. We'll just go seven. Okay. Just like that. And you can see it's basically targeting, you know, this area here, which is, you know, way out in the stretches outside of Fort Worth. We're going to go with ages. We want people of, you know, our closer to our client avatar age, right? So people that are probably like 27-ish to 55 years old, okay? And you can go all genders. I just leave it on all genders. Uh, leave it on, Leave the detail targeting wide open. I would not change this. The way you kill your ads is trying to like target people here. Um, what you want is as many people to see this as possible because it's really just an awareness ad. You want to get them the more radars and more people, okay? All languages, you probably want to go English only here if, unless you have, a, you know, another population of people in your gym that speak a certain language. I'd probably just go English here. And you can see it's daily search is going to show it to 592 to 1.7K people for $2 a day. Now, you could go up here and play with this and put it to five and see how much that would change. Well, 52, it's going to show it to a lot more people. But let's just say $5 a day. That'll show it to 1.3 to 3.8. We just want to do $2 per day, okay? Again, we're just, just, we're just playing it small here, okay? And then we go down here and placements. Uh, we, you can leave it on advantage placements, and that means it's just going to show it everywhere it can. Um, or, you know, if you wanted to get more specific, you could also, like, change this to manual placements. And if you wanted to only show it on the feed, you could turn off uh, basically, like, all these other things, stories and reels. Uh, and just turn on, you know, your feeds here, like Instagram feed, Facebook feed. If, say, you only want it to be seen there, which tends to be the most valuable place to be seen, I'd say, like, the feeds here, and then uh, I would say reels are your next best place. Uh, if you're doing it, you could also do it in stories as well. Um, if you're, you wanted to show it everywhere, you can just click Advantage Plus, and it'll just pick the, um, it'll just basically distribute your ad evenly across all these placements. And then you can come back later and see like what placements work best. I re kind of recommend this uh, for this strategy. It's not the strategy. It's not what I would recommend for all ad strategies, but for this strategy where it's really about volume and more people seeing this really high value content that you're publishing, uh, I would recommend this. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and click next, and then uh, at the top here we're gonna title it ad number one there. Cool. And then uh, down here, you're going to want to select your page and make sure your Instagram account is selected. And then right here is the trick where it says add setup. You're not going to create an ad. You're going to use the existing post. Okay. So we click existing post and then you can uh, turn, you can leave multi-advertiser ads on if you want uh, on this strategy. On other strategies, I don't necessarily recommend this, but for this strategy, I do. Uh, again, we're just trying to show it as many places as possible uh, for the $2 a day. We want more touch points, more eyeballs, more awareness, okay? So we're going to do that, and then we're going to click Select Post. This is where you're going to select your post. And then uh, this one here with Emily, we can see that it's gotten uh, here uh, 44 likes, 18 comments. That's a really good one. We should turn that one. We want to use our best of the ones that have the most engagement, okay? And we're going to click that and click Continue there. And now it's basically what it's going to do is it's turning this post post that we made organically that was one of our best posts all that all those likes all that all that uh, all those comments and it's going to turn it into uh, an ad and uh, it's basically going to show to his you know this if you go back to the previous step here it's going to show this ad to almost 600 to almost to 1700 people per day and uh, that means over the course of a month it's going to reach you know 30,000 to 50,000 people you know for two dollars a day Right, and that's, you know, and then you're gonna do that. Okay, so you're gonna do that, and then um, down here it says add, when you go back to the ad, 
we click add music. I would, you can add music to it if you want. If it's just an image post, uh, it's up to you. Uh, we're going to leave the text alone. We don't want to change anything. Uh, I, do not do a call to action button. A lot of people will make the mistake here of using a call to action button because they think, okay, I want to make it so it goes to my website. But here's the thing. It's, again, we're not trying to generate leads here. And these won't generate leads anyways. Even if you put the button here, you'll find after you run them that no one clicks it, right? Like what we're not trying to do here is we're not trying to get people to opt in right now. We're just trying to, again, get people to know, like, and trust us. So when we do run ads, we get them at a much better cost. And what you're going to also find is people are going to go through your website and opt in through there on their own. They don't need this button. And when you put this button here, it makes it look like an ad. Okay, it makes it look like an ad. These look like ads now. We don't want to do that. We want this to just look like an organic post uh, recognizing a local member. Okay, so we're going to remove that button. Because what's going to happen here is people are going to see the comments and the likes and all this activity, and they're going to get FOMO. They're going to get, this is going to persuade them to want to check you out. Um, and then down here, lead placements alone, you can click on your pixel for tracking events. You can click on these if you want. And then down here, you're just going to click publish. Okay, you're going to click publish and it's going to take it live. Now, what you're going to want to do is like, as you create more of these posts and have posts like this one, that have 100 plus likes, 18 comments, you're going to want to come in here and click on your ad set level right here. You're going to want to quickly duplicate. And we're going to turn this one into Paganic post number two. And uh, you're going to want to basically like leave all your ad set settings the same, all the same targeting, all the same everything. And you're going to go to your ad level on the clone and you're going to pick an, your next post, right? You're going to pick another post uh, that has hit a home run for you organically like this. Okay. So you're going to go ahead and click change post here and let's go back and see if they got another one um, down here, 15 years of medication. Okay. That one got some good uh, likes and three shares. That's kind of cool. Uh, that might be one we pick. Let's keep looking. And we want to stay away from like event related ones because the events go into the past and then people don't know what they are. Um, let's see, we're gonna keep going. Okay, that one's really good. Attention, okay, that's a that's a advertising a brand new class time. Uh, member of the month, that might be a good one. Uh, maybe one of these educational ones that they uh, that they use. I really like the educational ones he did with his, their coaches. So let's go and find that one with uh, Coach Bree. Let's see if we can find it. I have to go further down. going keep going keep going keep going keep going give me Instagram uh, it might be wise because they were under Instagram they published those to Instagram so we're gonna find right here so yeah here's uh that one shoulder and low back pain there we go so 50 likes that's a really good one so that's a video we're gonna select that one continue and you can see here now it's going to turn that one uh, the way we're asking the Instagram account people are mostly respond to. We're going to go and just leave that as is. We're going to click done, and we're going to make that one our uh, our our post here now because this one was only published to Instagram. It looks like I'm guessing it's not showing the uh, it's not showing the format for Facebook here. So you might want to make sure it's posted to Facebook as well as a native post on Facebook, not just a share there. Okay. So um, once you do that, you know, it should look something like this here. Once it loads, there we go. And it's going to basically push that one out. Okay. Um, and it's going to show it to that same, you know, 592, 1.7K per day reach that you're getting. And they're going to see that video. It's going to, you know, talk a little bit. It's going to be more of that educational. Oh, there it goes. It, it loaded it, updated this, the format here. So now it's showing it on Facebook. I just need to click off and click back. Facebook's ads manager sometimes is very, very slow like this. So you can see like now they're going to get this video that's very value driven, right? So we have the one that's kind of celebrating a member. We have this one that's talking about shoulder low back pain. I'm going to do one more. Okay. So I'm going to click quickly duplicate and I'm going to go to the, uh, I'm going to retitle this one. Number three, oh, right here, copy number three. And I'm going to leave all the ads that say the same $2 per day. So I've got three ads running for $2 a day each at $6 a day doing this paid organic strategy. Uh, the ad here, uh, ad number three, and we're going to pick another one. This time I want to pick one that kind of shows like some community, right? Because we had one that kind of recognized an individual member. We had one that gave some value. We want one that kind of creates some com community vibes and like maybe some FOMO. Okay, so we're going to go and uh, let's scroll through here and see if we can find one that's got a lot of engagement. That's kind of more of like a, a member related one. Um, Okay, uh, wrap up finishers, uh, 
Oh, that's kind of cool. 2024 wrap-up finishers. Those who came to 20 plus classes between Thanksgiving and New Year's, 54 people. We are so impressed by all of your dedication. It's all about those gold stars, am I right? So that's kind of cool. So you're kind of recognizing some of your existing members that attended 20 plus classes at the end of last year, which were at the beginning of this year. So it kind of makes sense to publish that. It's got good engagement, some shares, some comments. Uh, it's kind of celebrating the community showing up. I'm gonna go ahead and click that one there. And you can see it's kind of celebrating their committed club, which is a, a strategy. We have all of our gyms run, which recognizes existing members. And you can see it's like him high-fiving a member uh, showcasing some members, some smiles, just really, a really, really nice looking post. I really, really like this. Showing 54 people showing up for 20 plus classes over the holidays. So it's like showing this commitment level. So I really, really, really like this as well. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and title each of these at the ad set level. So this is like our wrap up finishers post. So uh, I'm gonna go up here and type wrap up. Okay, this one here uh, was uh, the value post about the hips and shoulders. So we're going to title this one here, just so I know what it is. Uh, hips and shoulders value. Okay. This one is a uh, community. And this one here was, uh, in, in, you know, recognizing this member, Emily, we can call this recognition. Uh, yeah, recognition. We'll just call it recognition. We'll call this, uh, you know, uh, two year recognition. Perfect. Okay, cool. So there you have it. Now you would go and just click, you know, once these are all done, you just click publish. Now, what you do is like you come in here, uh, you know, once every month and uh, maybe take out some of the old ones and replace it with some of the new ones you've done in the last month in your organic, right? And this is why it's important going back to the beginning of the video of why the organic content be like really, really good. And like the kind of content that it is is because. That's what we're pushing out into your local your local area with this strategy. Now, what ends up happening is like these posts will now get like tens of thousands of views locally because you know as it shows here at the asset level, we're getting a reach of like you know 592 to 1.7k. Now, if I look, this gym owner's already been doing this strategy in here. If I go, um, you know, you can see that like the re reach on some of these have got you know thousand plus. I'm going to go uh, maximum here and go back to some of the ones that have run for a while, but. There's some 8,000 views, uh, 22,000 views, uh, 35,000 views, 28,000 views. Um, and as a result, like everybody in their, their town is only like three or 4,000 people. And then the surrounding towns are not big either. Um, but this is how they're pulling people in from further away. This is how they're getting everybody in their town to come be a part of the gym. This is why their word of mouth is so strong is because everybody knows who they are in their town in their surrounding area. Now, if you're in a more population dense area, it's gonna be even much higher than this. You can, you can with the same budget, hit th hundreds of thousands of people over the course of a month. Uh, and when you're doing this consistently, what you have happening is this volume starts to stack. And before too long, two, three, four, five, six months, a year, like you dominate your local market, right? That's what ends up happening here, okay? So that is like your paid organic strategy. Now, if you wanna take it steps further, what you could also do is uh, what's called the, the retargeting version, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to retarget. So real quick, this will take like a couple of minutes to kind of show you the retargeting version because it's not that complicated. But basically what you're doing is you're going into your business manager or your ads manager, you're going into what's called audiences, okay? And you're gonna leave this page and um, you're gonna come in here and create an audience and you're gonna go custom audience and you're gonna go with people that have watched like any one of your videos or uh, people, so we'll start with that one. You can, you can create audience of people that have engaged with your stuff and you're gonna create next and you're gonna say people who watched at least three seconds of my video uh, or let's say people have watched at least 25% of my video. So uh, over the last, you know, 10 days, okay? And uh, I'm gonna say uh, 10 day views, 25% uh, there. Okay, cool. So like that's where we're gonna name it and uh, audience retention. Why is it not letting me save it? Oh, we gotta choose our videos. There we go. So you come in here and we're gonna go to this Jim's account and select it. And uh, we're just gonna select all their recent videos. Like everybody that's watched some of their recent videos, you can see like some of these videos have got 35,000, 3,500 views, 3,800 views, 188 views, some more than others, right? And we're gonna go in here and there's pages of them. And we're gonna just select all of them. And you can keep going and selecting like all your videos recently, okay? Boom, 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 boom. And we're gonna click confirm, okay? 
That's people that have watched 25% of these videos here. And we're gonna go ahead and click Create Audience. And you're gonna wanna go back in here every now and then and update those videos with the newer videos, right? And it's gonna go ahead and populate a list. Uh, another one we can create is Custom Audience. And uh, we're gonna go, let's say with uh, Facebook page and click Next. And let's go Facebook page is their page. Everyone that's engaged with their page, anybody who visited their page, anybody uh, who engaged with a post or an ad, anybody uh, currently liking or following your page. Let's go with anybody who engaged with the post or ad. So if they like watched the video, if they liked it, if they commented on it, if they clicked it and opened it, if they shared it, anything. So we're gonna go um, page uh, engaged. We're gonna go last 10 days, 10 days. Okay, I'm gonna click create audience. Okay, and then we're gonna do one more just for the heck of it, okay? And we're gonna go custom audience. Let's go Instagram next and we can go last 10 days. You can go as far back as you want, but you want people who re recently saw your stuff. They saw, they clicked on something recently because we're gonna retarget those people with all these things, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and click this and let's say people who uh, engage with a post or an ad and let's go uh, IG post engaged 10 days. Okay, and we're gonna create audience. Okay, so here we go. So we have now these three recent uh, audiences we've created right here. Okay, and these people are if people that have watched 25% of a video, they've engaged with a post on Facebook, they've engaged with a post on IG, and I'm gonna go back to the ads manager. Okay, I'm gonna go to campaigns, and I could basically build the same campaign I just did. I'm not gonna go from the top, but see this organic pay, uh, thing here? If, uh, you know, right now I have it set to run to everybody regardless of if they see my stuff or not, and that's what I recommend doing. But if you want to take this steps further, what you could do is you could like duplicate this same strategy. Okay, I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to title this one with retargeting. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, click edit here. And I'm going to click on all three. I'm going to check all three so I can edit them all at the same time, all three, and click edit. And what I'm gonna do is go down here to my targeting and I'm gonna use my save audiences, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, let's see, custom audiences. There we go. I'm gonna select these most recent three I just created, IG post engaged, post engaged on FB, and video views, okay? And I'm just gonna run this the same way. So anybody who's in, in, in engaged with any of my posts, any of my content in the last 10 days, watched 25% or more of a video, clicked on a post, clicked on a Facebook post, Instagram post, they're now gonna get served these three posts that we created earlier in the video in rotation. And because we have it set on, uh, you know, show it as many times as possible, maximum number of impressions, those posts are gonna get a huge, like they're gonna get, they're gonna be hitting people that have already seen your stuff, okay? So highly, highly, highly recommend um, that you uh, run this strategy. When you do this, and then you go in and run a, like a more lead generated based ads, when you do run them, you're gonna find your ads run much more effective because what's happening is Facebook naturally, when they run a, a, a lead ad campaign, when you run a lead campaign on Facebook or Instagram or Meta, uh, when you have a red hot audience of people that is clicking on your, your stuff, they're seeing your stuff, they're, um, uh, they're already engaging with it. They're in this audience. Naturally, what happens is they're going to show the ads to that uh, that those people first, right? Which makes sense because other people that are like red hot, like ready to go, ready to buy. Okay, so that's that's the strategy, guys. That's the paid organic strategy. Uh, just to close it out here, real quick. Um, you know, you don't rise to the levels of your goals here, guys. Like you can have you can you can talk all day about your goals and like how you want to build a million dollar gym and you can try to will it into existence. But you know, here we are in 2024 and it's a very saturated market and you don't rise to the level of your goals anymore. You fall to the level of your systems. This is from the book Atomic Habits by a guy named James Clear. 
It's one of my favorite books, and it's an awesome book. Every, every business owner should read it. Every person should read it. Um, and so I want to tell you guys about the Big Little Gyms Pro Group. The Big Little Gyms Pro Group, I want you guys to imagine, imagine a system for gym owners that focuses exclusively on brick and mortar group gym owners just like you. It helps you scale. And it's, pro it's using proven and sustainable lead generation and sales systems that work to sell full price memberships to high quality prospects for premium recurring monthly fees instead of trying to bait people into uh, joining your gym with discounts and front end, you know, one time front end offers and all these urgency scarcity type of offers. It's using simple systems that don't just work now, but work for a long time. Because what we talked about today is just generating traffic, right? What happens next when we generate traffic? We have to generate leads. And what happens when we generate leads? We need to generate bookings. And what happens when we generate bookings is we need to get those people to show up and we need to close those people at premium prices. So that's exactly what we're going to talk about doing uh, here at Big Little Gyms is setting all those systems up to maximize conversion and build a steady flow uh, of leads and bookings and shows and sales in your pipeline. And this is going to be without selling your soul or running shady get fit quick offers. And this is where everybody's aligned with the same goal. Our goal for you and for us is growth, healthy communities, and financial freedom, right? You got into this, you started a gym because you wanted to uh, dis disconnect yourself from the rat race and do something meaningful with your life and have an impact on your community and the people you serve. It's the reason I do what I do. The reason why Big Little Gyms exists is because I ran two gyms for a decade. I've run a bunch of other businesses too. I've run uh, you know, e-com companies, land multi-state landscaping installation companies and wholesale companies big businesses. And the reason why I got into gym ownership is because fitness has been had a profound effect on my life, both personally and mentally and spiritually. And my goal is to affect a million lives that way. And we know we can do that through your, your communities, through your tribes, through your reach. And uh, we know we can do that at scale with you. And uh, this is run by me and my awesome team. You're going to meet me. My wife, Erin, is also on the team. Uh, you're going to meet our operator, Josh, and some of our team members are going to help you onboard into our program and implement all these systems. And that's exactly what the focus is on. It's Im implementation and collaboration, not long, boring content. Here at Big Little Gyms, when we got into this space and we owned our gyms, we noticed that all these gurus, all they wanted to do was talk, 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 and make you watch hours and hours of video. And then when you didn't do what they, when you didn't get the result that they told you to get, they blamed it on you for not watching their content. That's not what we do here. We take actionable results, just like this video here today. If you spent time watching this video, you need to put this into action. And that's what we're doing here at Big Little Gems. This is gonna feel out like you're hanging out with friends. We are a community, we are a tribe. As a client of our program, you get access to our private community with 600 plus gym owners and managers and operators, our weekly coaching calls uh, for like tech and our strategy side, our entire classroom, our entire, coach, our entire calendar, our entire discussion group. And that that is what the Big Little Gems Pro Group is. And how we do this is, is we focus on our seven pillars of model, offer, and mindset, building your lead generation engine, follow up and appointment setting, driving traffic to that through paid and organic strategies, just like the one you've got here today, closing and sales, and then fine tuning your operations and fulfillment so you can scale to the moon. Because that's what it's all about is not being the uh, not being stuck in the self-employed, um, you know, uh, wheel. Uh, you know what I mean? Like what we want you to do is get to a place where you can engage with your business as, as an employee of it as much as you want. Like as a gym owner, I used to like coach cl coaching classes, but I didn't like coaching 30 classes a week. I liked coaching like four or five classes a week and just being able to touch base with my members and stay on the ground floor. But I didn't want to be forced to have to coach 30 classes a week. It was burning me out. So for me, it was ultimately getting in the driver's seat of my business and being the mayor of my gym and being able to show up and make appearances at my gym and people wanting to see me and wanting to get my leadership and resources. And when I did coach a class, it was a big deal. I love that position in my gym and I hope, you do, hope you're hope you looking for that too. Our community is a private community that collaborate, where we collaborate with 600 plus gym owners who are growth focused, who are winning, right? And it's not about growth for growth's sake. It's about building a better community. The only way you grow is to keep the members you have too. So we're not talking about just getting new members to replace the ones you're losing all the time. We're talking about getting members and making them stick and building better retention models as well. You get two times weekly, uh, weekly live growth and strategy calls, uh, also focused around tech as well and getting all your tech systems set up. And this is one part system and one part guidance and mentorship and one part collaboration, okay? And our timeline is that in the first six weeks of working with us, we're gonna build, launch, and, and set up your entire marketing system. So you have one unified marketing funnel and multiple traffic sources driving traffic into it. Uh, we're gonna onboard you and your team. So if you have a manager or an operator that, you, that runs this gym, or if maybe even if you're a franchise and you have franchisee, if you're a franchisor and you have franchisees you want to set this up with, we can onboard them and deploy these systems. You'll uh, start to uh, get more leads, more bookings, and more intros at higher prices in the first 10 days when this thing launches. We see it all the time. And then each month we have a plan and strategy for growth provided for you. So you're growing and building that snowball all month, month over month 
all the time. Uh, but you must be ready. You must be ready to do the work. You must be ready to take action. You must be ready to grow personally and professionally. Um, we don't want any program hoppers here. We're not looking. Uh, if we're not looking for people who are just looking for the next tactic, tactic or marketing play, right? We're looking for people that want to invest in and grow their businesses for the long term and change as many lives as possible in the years to come while also being successful and having your freedom. That's what we want. We want you to show up to the calls. We want you to sell your leads and do good follow up. We want you to serve your members better, and we want you to stop running a passion project that t and to start just to really start taking the business side of this just as passionately and run the business side of this thing uh, seriously as well. Because running a business on passion alone doesn't guarantee that you get to do it forever. Doesn't guarantee you're gonna make an income, doesn't make, guarantee you're gonna be successful. In fact, like the worst thing you can do for your business is it not make money and go out of business. At the end of the day, that means the results you, and the impact you had on this world were short-lived. They weren't lasting, right? And at the end of the day, we wanna build, do business with people who wanna build lasting results with the people they work with, okay? Um, now, if you believe you can do it and that you are worth it, and if that's you, then you're invited to go to biglittlegyms.com. If you go to biglittlegyms.com, you can watch, you can you can go to the page there and see a little bit more about what we do. You'll click the get started button. Up will pop a simple form. They'll ask you for name, phone number, email so we can follow up with you and answer the questions you have. On the next page, it will ask you to uh, select the time you wanna book a discovery call if that's what you wanna do. Uh, when you do that, it's also gonna ask you a few questions about your gym to make sure you're qualified for our program. At the end of the day, like we, um, if you're not a fit, we'll tell you. If you are a good fit and your goals align with this here, then we'll hold that standing call and uh, we'll book that discovery call with you and uh, we'll show you how to grow your gym. And if it makes sense, we'll do business together. Now, if you need some, say you're not there yet, say you know, you need some more proof and want more valuable content like this uh, for free. If you want more content like this for free, then you know, both like, subscribe, and click the notification bell below on this video so you get the notifications here on uh, YouTube or whatever platform you're watching it. But also go to gymownergroup.com and join the free group there. There's a free group that has uh, 1,400 gym owners in it actively. As of this recording right now, it's probably gonna be bigger or whenever you do it. Um, you can also see all of our, uh, more of our free content. Uh, you can see what other people are saying. You can see more proof of what we do. You can ask questions in there. And you get to know us a little bit more and feel more comfortable with us before you take that leap because we know that there's a million gym gurus out there that have been in the space a long time that haven't, um, you know, earned your, you know, earned your like, know, and trust. And at the end of the day, we want us to do business with, you want us to do business with you when you're ready to take those steps and really make a big stride in your business for the long term, not just a quick fix to make a few bucks and have to start over again in two or three months. So that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Click like, subscribe, and the notification bell. And if you have any follow up questions or uh, want to share how much you enjoyed the video, please leave a comment in the comment section below and have an amazing day. Go crush it onward and upward. See you guys later. Bye.